Hi, welcome to a follow-up tutorial for our two-column CSS layout. This is a follow-up to your in-class learning. If you haven't already done so, make sure you have a printed copy of the tutorial. That can be found under the MSCT Dreamweaver site online. Under Tools Dev, if you go down where it says Floating CSS Two-Column PDF, go ahead and download, print that, and have that ready to go because we'll be following that pretty closely. First thing here is that I've gone ahead and done the first two parts of that tutorial, which is to set up the HTML document as well as the CSS document. And I have linked the CSS style to this HTML document so that I can put all of my styles in my CSS area. I can put all of my content in my HTML area. First thing that I notice here is that I have a flashing cursor. Notice that I've got some padding to the left and to the top of that. That's because the default for every HTML page is to have that buffer zone. We need to clear that out in order to get started. Easiest way to clear it is to grab some code that does it for us. I'm going to come over here to our website, go to default page code snippets, and I'm going to go ahead and highlight this particular chunk because that is the piece that I need to clear it out. Notice that I'm not going to put this in the HTML section. I do want to put this here in the CSS section. I'm going to go ahead and refresh that and zip back here to my HTML doc. And now notice my cursor is flushed upper left. Next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and create uh, some page property pieces. And for my purposes, I'm going to choose a Verdana font. And I'm going to choose 16 pixels, and there's lots of reasons why I'm doing this, but those are all things that I would have explained in class. I'm going to click on a text color of black. I'm also going to um, choose a background color of... kind of this green. Okay, so now those are the big things in terms of my page property. I'm not quite sure that these colors are going to work for me eventually, but these are the things that I can use to at least visualize my changes as I'm moving along. Select your own colors, of course. The first thing I'm going to do as far as our tutorial is concerned is I'm going to create a wrapper. I'm going to click on Insert, Layout Objects, Div Tag, and I'm going to type the phrase wrapper here. Don't really need to do anything else at this point, but click OK. Now the wrapper immediately comes onto our page and there is some placeholder text in there which I really don't need. In fact, I don't want at all. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Select the wrapper. The better way to select any kind of div tag is down here in the lower left area. So if this collapsed on itself, which these are have the tendency to do, that's fine. Click on wrapper. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on new CSS rule and it's called wrapper because it, know that it knows that I clicked on it and that's fine. I'm going to click OK. In this case, I want to make this box, this whole division box, 800 pixels wide. And I want its margins not on top or bottom. I don't want those margins there. But I want the margins on the right and the left to flow automatically depending on the size of the browser. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And indeed, the wrapper has collapsed on itself. And that looks a little disconcerting, but don't worry about it. One of the things though I want to do is I want to pay attention over here. Notice that my body elements have um, inadvertently ended up inside the HTML. This is an indication right here that these styles are sitting in HTML. This is an indication that these styles are sitting in my CSS. I really want them all in one area. So I'm going to go ahead and drag my body pieces up to my uh, CSS and get rid of them out in my HTML. That way they're all in one file, nice, neat, and clean. Um, first thing I'm going to do is save everything just because that's always good practice. I'm going to come up here and take a look and indeed in terms of a preview there looks like there's nothing there. Back here in Dreamweaver I'm going to go ahead and click into this area roughly. I'm going to select the the uh, wrapper tag by clicking on it down here and down left. Now again I'd said earlier that these div tags will collapse in and on themselves as long as they don't have anything in there and that's certainly the case now. I'm going to come up here to the word insert and our objective is to create the banner tag and actually put it inside the wrapper tag. Once again I've clicked on insert layout objects div tag. This time I'm going to call it the banner 
the thing with these IDs, these div IDs, is that they have to be unique on the page, meaning that I can only have one div called banner. I can only have one div called wrapper, etc. This time, however, I don't want it to wrap around anything. I want this particular tag to start after the wrapper tag. So I don't want to I don't want it to be after the tag completely, which is what this choice would be. I want it to be after the start of that wrapper tag. If you remember back in your HTML, these tags have a start or an opening and a closing or an end. So start of tag, wrapper, banner, we're good. Clicks OK to go. And for the sake of understanding what this is, I'm going to just uh, change that text to be banner. Now, there is nothing that tells the page what to do in terms of style with that banner. It just knows that the, the box exists. It knows that I've got some content in there. I want to go ahead and click on div banner. I'm going to come over here to my rule area. I'm going to create a new rule and this is wrapper and banner. This is creating what's called specificity and that's fine. That's the way I would want it to do. I would want these to happen so that if I do in fact create a rule that is going to apply say to the entire wrapper that everything inside the wrapper also picks up that rule. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. This time the default for a div is that it will explode out to the entire width of whatever it is inside, this case the 800 pixel wrapper. That's fine for this banner. I'm going to go ahead and um, go to its background and I'm going to go ahead and pick a background color just so that it has something color wise to look up against. And that's really the only thing I need to do. I could come in here to box if I wanted to and I could specify say a 40 pixel high box. Don't really want to do that in the long term because I don't want to limit that. But if I choose 40 at least now I'll be able to see it. So here it is indeed my 40 pixel tall. Today we're not getting into styling of text so I'm not going to worry about the fact that my banner piece is very very dark against that background. It wouldn't stay that way for a final site anyway. Next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and click on um, insert. I want to insert a top navigation which is basically the same as that banner. Um, it's just going to sit right underneath it so I'm going to click on insert layout objects div tag. This time I want to call it top nav and this time I'm already inside my wrapper tag but I want it to be after my banner tag. So I want this new top nav bar to come in after my banner tag. I'm going to click OK and I'm going to um, type in top nav one um, just to break it up here top nav two <coughs> excuse me top nav three just as a kind of a uh, a wake up call as to what that box does for me. No big deal. Now in this particular case I want to go ahead and select that top nav bar here and I'm going to come over and create a new rule for it and again I'm, I'm being very specific in terms of I want that rule to apply from the wrapper into the top nav. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go ahead and choose my background color and I'm going to choose something kind of uh, wild here. I'm going to choose an orange color. This is going to be a, a very, very colorful little piece after we're all said and done here. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now keep in mind that the defaults of all of these div tags is that they will explode out to the entire page and in fact in, if I go ahead and preview that uh, indeed that is the case. Okay. Note here that they are lining up nice and tight left to right here. The reason why there's no gaps is because I cleared out all of my padding and borders and margins earlier. Notice that I have not applied a specific width to either the banner or the nav but because the overall wrapper is 800 wide that's going to stay in place.